Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Shoes. We are playing on the Shizen Hogoku Zoo on Planet Zoo today. And thankfully we are doing another habitat walkthrough. This time we are doing the Garioles for our new habitat. It took me a few minutes to figure out who I wanted and where to actually put down these guys. But just a few things before we get into the rest of the video. I do want to mention that we're going to have two different segments in this video today. And one part's going to be mainly doing the habitat, and the second part is mainly doing the decorations outside of the habitat. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what I mean later. But first off, I do want to mention that this is going to be an underwater viewing area along with some uh, neutral ground viewing area. So people can view these guys from, you know, when they're swimming or just on the land. So that being said, there's a lot that goes into this habitat along with a lot of terrain modifications to get this just right. So if you are new here on the channel, we do do these walkthroughs very often here on Planet Zoo. Hopefully you can learn something. I hope you guys can. I know a lot of you guys do. So therefore, I'm gonna be showing you around a lot of the techniques I use in this video. So we first off start off with terrain modification. And in our terrain modification, we have several different layers. We first have the underwater layer so where the water is going to be placed and you know getting down the base level where the water is going to be we're going to have the uh, neutral ground layer so just wherever the main path is it's going to be on the same level with that that is complete and then we're going to have a slightly higher ground level area where it's going to be sitting more toward the back of our habitat and the reason why we approached it this way was because People can view them from underwater, which is great for this type of animal. But at the same time, you're giving this habitat a slope to where guests can view at a neutral level and see them from down below and see them up high. But it's at an easy slope, so it's not like they can hide really behind anything. And the good thing about these uh, crocodiles, the gharials, is that they are confident around humans. So I don't think they're gonna get stressed much and I haven't really tested that out yet, but I probably will later. But that being said, as of right now, we are just trying to test out the water level and to see how it goes. There's a few different things that I tried in here. And uh, one being is that I wanted to get the slope just right so these guys can enter the water with ease and really have no restrictions on where they can enter from. At the same time, I did kind of add a little peninsula in the middle so they can kind of come up. So the people that are viewing from the underwater section can actually get a brief idea of how these guys get in the water so it's a little bit closer to them. So you can see a little bit of the thought process right there. Now, one big issue that I came across is that these guys only needed a grade two barrier level, but we had this regular metal barrier, but it was not watertight. So it didn't really work out for us. So we ended up using some concrete. We had to spend the extra money here in a franchise mode. Unfortunately, money is an issue in franchise mode that we have to really pay attention to. It adds to that extra challenge. However, we have $100,000 and only have two species in our zoo. <laughs> so uh, it's not much of an issue, but we have to keep that in mind so we don't go underneath you know, our debt and whatever. Toward the front of this habitat, in our underground water viewing area, you do see that we end up bringing the glass down to the certain area of where the ground is, uh, or sorry, where the path is flat. And we do that because we don't want people clogging the staircase to you know, look through the glass and you know basically prevent everyone else from getting up there. That would be inefficient and bad. But I mentioned how I wanted people to see from a neutral ground level. I actually end up raising the ground level viewing platform. I'm trying to figure out a better way to say that, but I can't right now. But what I end up doing here is I actually bring in a nice little path and it does this little weird circle. So it's going to be like a little pavilion slash observatory. So you can kind of see into the habitat and you'll see how I do it better later. I do a rough little, you know, estimate to how it's going to work out in the first segment of this video. But as for most of the habitat, these guys really don't require much space. They require around 300 square meters for water area and I think like 250 square meters for 
just land area and essentially we end up i think quadrupling that so <laughs> these guys have plenty of space they're not going to run out anytime soon which is very nice however the main concern is that we need to make sure people can view this and i think we did a spectacular job today in doing that so I did get the barrier complete. I do have a little bit of null barrier in this, but I ended up keeping a lot of, you know, concrete barriers in here as well. We're gonna start easing away from that in the second segment, most likely. Uh, but we're just trying to get done the necessities right now, and we're trying to understand where these guys can escape and where they can't. So the only place that they can escape right now is through the pavilion viewing area. And by that area, we are gonna set down some rocks around this area. So very easy. These gharials really do enjoy living in areas where there's a lot of rocks. That is one of their terrain requirements is like uh, they want to like at least 10% of the terrain to be rock. Rocks were not an issue in this habitat. And in fact, I can use a ton of them. It makes it so much better. Brings this habitat to life in a different way and manner, which I enjoy. But we end up circling this area with rocks and what I'm gonna end up doing for the second segment is that I'm gonna end up putting a fence line around those rocks. But essentially the rocks themselves will prevent these guys from getting out, which is good because we don't want them eating up our people. However, these guys are actually very good with not eating people and they're really not a danger to you know, people. Just you know, don't piss them off and you're good. It's almost like alligators, except sometimes alligators can be annoying. Sorry, I'm. You know, I live in Florida most of my year, so uh, I know about gators. <laughs> Anyhow, we just do a lot of rock structures in this first segment, and uh, another thing that we need to do is make sure these guys also have a shelter. So I've been wanting to use the castle pieces for these guys for a while, or for, sorry, for the zoo for a while, and these guys, I think, can work it out with the castle style in this. And the way that I actually approach this is very interesting. I never used this building style before, so I have no idea what I'm doing. But it will look like I know what I'm doing after I'm done. <laughs> so just bear with me. We end up doing this thing where we want to make sure our people can see these crocodiles. Or sorry, I should call them gharials. I don't know if you can consider them a crocodile or not. I haven't even looked at the wiki yet. The, or sorry, the zoo wikipedia or zoopedia or whatever they call it. I have to brief my knowledge. I'll have more knowledge for the second segment of this video. As you can tell, I'm only recording one segment of this video at a time, and then I have to do the second one. I'm recording this a night before I do the second one, so I don't even know what I'm doing next. But you guys will see the transition, and hopefully it'll be interesting. But for the building here, we end up using all East Asia stuff, and we set up this castle-like pavilion for these guys. I think pavilion is just the right word for it, to be honest with you. We end up putting the castle look toward the back of it, and we don't put it in the front because we want these guys to be seen still. So we make sure we do that. And as for the terrain, we kind of just make it so it looks a little bit more neat and whatnot. But that wasn't good enough for me. I think I could have done better. So I end up taking a little bit of the habitat space out, end up connecting a keeper's hut right up against this thing. And this is all for a little bit more of, you know, complexity. I don't know what I was really going for, but essentially it came out beautiful. So, I mean, like the wood for the pillars of this building and you know, the castle structure looked great and the tiles on top worked even better. Now we have to figure out how to put this keeper's hut in. <laughs> so I just kind of threw it in there. I'm like, all right, I might as well go for it see how it turns out it may be a complete disaster but who knows and it looks very nice and i just make it like a little tower that's all i really do with the keeper's hut and somehow it adds that little extra you know detail to this it makes it look so much better so that being said i think this is one of our best habitats so far never mind just in the shizen hogoku zoo but in even the katadin zoo itself like this is a really nice habitat. You got the water viewing and you got the mid ground to high ground viewing pavilion. And these animals just, they have a very good habitat. So essentially what I'm gonna end up doing here very shortly is I'm gonna be cutting the video and I have to record the rest of this tomorrow and 
we gotta fix out the outside because if you recall and if you can see at any point in time toward the beginning of where our water viewing area is there is still a big ditch basically so we have to figure out how to make it so it doesn't look unnatural or it doesn't look dangerous to where somebody could just fall down and you know basically die because that's what it looks like right now so we're gonna get that fixed up and there's really nothing else to this habitat very sandy very rocky very nice a few plants here and there makes it look like it's maintained but not too maintained if you know what i mean so it feels more natural so that's great we're gonna be doing a little bit more in the habitat along for the you know around the idea of rocks and stuff so we're just gonna get straight into that okay so welcome to part two of this video we are doing just like we said, we're going to be doing a little bit more of a fix up for the outside presentation of this habitat. So therefore we started off with making a simple rock wall along the side of our habitat where our path is going to continue on to certain areas. What those areas are going to be, I have no clue at this moment in time, but we will figure it out as time goes on. But we make it so we try to make sure people don't look through over there. I may have to edit it in the future now that I'm looking at it. But the whole idea is that we don't want that path to be clogged either. So we also do use some concrete barrier to make sure people just don't look in through it. And we use a lot of rock on this side. We only really do more of a rock wall up against the path toward the upper level of that area. And we kind of phase it off down toward the bottom. But there's going to be a few jump scenes in this, and I do apologize. Otherwise, this video would be over 20 minutes long, and I'm trying to stay away from that. But onto our observatory slash pavilion. We do also make a nice little, you know, round shape pavilion. Now, the problem is, is I think I used like a six meter path that circled around this pavilion. I should have probably done four because the pavilion actually does not completely cover over all the path, which is what I wanted to have happen but it ended up not working out. So we end up just quite simply making a small little pavilion, nothing too special, more of like a shader, not really anything to keep the rain off of you. That was kind of more of the concept behind it after I realized the first part wouldn't work. But then we wanted to make sure we got our fence in, like I mentioned previously. And we end up putting the fence in quite simply. We just bring it closer to the path than we do on the outer side of the rock because you don't want people to climb on the rock and stuff like that. So it's like one of those little minor details that make it a little bit more realistic. And then I also do add more fencing on the bottom of the rocks to make it look like an animal can't kind of come up and climb to try to come get you <laughs> because that would be really, really bad. Uh, not like these guys can climb, but it looks like it's an extra safety measure. So that's why we left that in there and that's why we did it. But I do want to talk about the gharials a little bit. The gharials, I did look up more on the Zoopedia, and they are very affected by their river pollution where they live. And with that river pollution, it kills off a lot of the fish, of which they actually go ahead and feed off of. So that's why these guys are critically endangered. And they are pretty cool, although in real life they kind of look ugly. In the game, they look pretty cool. So <laughs> besides that... That's just a little bit of background information. But as for our water viewing area or our underground water viewing area, whatever you want to call it, all up to your preference, we do most of the work for this area. And I'll be completely honest, I don't finish half the stuff that I was planning to do. I'm trying to keep this video short for you guys, but you can at least see some of the thought process going behind this. And I wanted to do something that wasn't so restrictive like these stone walls right here because they are grid parts and they're very long they're four meters long so it kind of cuts into the path a little bit and there may be some clipping issues but it was the only thing that i could figure out that would work out for this area i wanted to use that man-made stone that east asia stone that we've been using a lot of the parts of this park but it wouldn't work out it was very repetitive and it was just too much for this long area so we end up filling this area in with some mulch and by doing this it looks like a simple garden barrier but it's man-made it looks sort of natural but it's that balance between natural and man-made so it doesn't look out of place but it also looks like you know humans actually had to create this because otherwise we wouldn't be able to make an underground 
viewing area for, you know, the gators that are swimming, or sorry, the gharials that are swimming. So we kind of fit in that balance a little bit, and we do have a little bit of area where we couldn't fit in the rock, so we just kind of play it off, and we end up putting in some, I think we put trees on both sides, and then we just put in some wood curbs instead. So we end up doing that as well. Works out very well. Nothing wrong there. And essentially there's really nothing else that we do with this except we add in some, you know, little education boards downstairs and the water viewing area and whatnot like that. So we really try to make it so this place works efficiently. Now I still have to do a little bit of work off camera. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more in the cinematics of what I do differently. But as phase two is in this video, I'm just showing you guys a little bit of the thought process and how we actually complete the beautification on the outer side of our habitat. So therefore, we're gonna show you some more in the cinematics, but this is where I'm gonna end off the video. So I thank you for watching. If you would like to help support our channel, please hit that like button. I would highly appreciate it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date. Join our Discord as well. If you join our Discord and subscribe, do both those things and you will get a shout out in the next few videos. So be sure to take advantage of that. Any comments, suggestions, anything else you'd like to say, please leave them in the comment section below and I will be sure to review them. I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.